Hi everyone. Good day to you, wherever you are. And I welcome you to the finest music drama channel. Sharing the love, of finest literature. Just, lie down on an easy chair. Throw your cares off your mind. Think of nothing, but the temperature of your drink. I hope, you will enjoy today's dramatization. Your comments are much appreciated. Please support the love, of finest literature, by subscribing and sharing the channel with friends, to get updated on future releases. We have a haunting wintry tale for you from master of the short story Guy de Maupassant coming up in just a moment. So put a witch's shawl on, a broomstick you can crawl on, we're gonna pay a call on. No, I've done it again, haven't I? Anyway. Okay, it's time for us to head to the Swiss Alps for a tale that's literally chilling, as the owners of an inn completely cut off in the winter find themselves worryingly isolated. This is Guy de Maupassant's The Inn. The Inn by Guy de Maupassant Dramatised for radio by Sue Glover I can hear the snow I can hear it falling, flying, floating, past me, over me, melting into me. The blue-black sky is filled with flakes. Hundreds and thousands and millions, they'll never stop falling. They'll never stop flying, floating, falling. Louise! Oh, Louise, it's freezing in here. Haven't you closed the shutters yet? I was looking at the snow. Oh, oh, it's coming down thicker than ever. For goodness sake, girl, close them. Here, let me do it. The first real snow. It's winter now. What can you be thinking of? It was like a block of ice. The snow's blowing in, lying on my bed and my best quilt. I hate it. I hate it. We must thank the good Lord your father brought you all down from the mountain today. Hate it. I was just saying, sister, the pass will be blocked tomorrow, if not tonight. Oh, that husband of yours likes to cut things fine. I'm always worried sick until you're safe off the mountain. You say that every year, sister. You've only just got through in time. Again. My Hauser knows the mountains. Hauser should take more care. Pass of Gemmy's claimed a few. Not to mention the mountains themselves. Sparta, don't dwell on such things. Such things? How can you not dwell on such things? Well, you've arrived safe and sound. <laughs> oh, it's good to have you here again. When the white flakes fly, as if the sky will never stop snowing. It's good to be here, Berta. <laughs> when everything's cold and white and hard as iron, how can you not remember? Hauser! Maurice! Aren't you men hungry? Oh, and bring the children in. They're playing in the stable. Come on, boots on the table. <sighs> Louise looks exhausted, Jean. Oh, I hope she isn't going to fall ill again. It's taken her so long. Another winter. Another snow. Every winter we come down to the valley and stay with my aunt and uncle. We come with the snow and go with the snow. As soon as the pass is open again and clear enough for the mules, we climb back up to Schwarenbach, to my father's inn. And every winter of my life, all sixteen of them, old Gaspar stayed up on the mountain and looked after the empty inn. Gaspar and Marcel, the two guides who'd worked longest at Schwarenbach. But Gaspar was the one my father trusted. And then Marcel was taken poorly, and my father asked the new guide, Ulrich, if he'd stay on with Gaspar through the winter. Ulrich Kunzi. Because he was young, and very strong, and quiet, and steady. 
You have ever uh, spent a winter on the mountains, Ulrich? Uh, no, Monsieur Hauser. Well, not on the high slopes. What do you say? Are you willing to stay up here four or five months? Yes, Monsieur. <laughs> no one better than Gaspar here to show you the ropes. Oh, I'll show him the ropes. I was putting the bread on the table. Ulrich looked at me then as my father spoke. Looked straight into my eyes. We'd barely spoken all summer. Mama always said, the cat stole my tongue. But she could have said the same about Ulrich. Well, that's settled then. Thank you, monsieur. His eyes were blue. You're, uh, you're not a drinking man, Ulrich. I've noticed that. Well, I've never seen him the worse for drink, Kauser. <laughs> not even when those English climbers filled Gaspard up with brandy. Oh, now, madame. You know that isn't true. You tell him, monsieur, I wasn't drunk, was I? Drunk as a pole, Gaspar. It was something I ate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you, Gaspar? There's nothing wrong with my cooking. Oh. By next year, Ulrich, you'll know all there is to know about hunting. His curls were so shiny. Always after he'd seen to the mules, he would stick his head under the pump. Not just his face, his whole head, his curls. He smelled of... Summer. And you'll know about birds, Ulrich, like it or not. Oh, Gaspar and his birds. Plenty to see in the winter. Chuffs, eagles, ravens, if you're lucky. Ugh, ravens? Lucky? Uh, the eagle's the lucky one. It's the golden eagle the travellers come to see. I like to see them all. God put them all here on the mountain. Uh -huh. I had a raven once that was tame, yet yeah, half tame. Oh, a raven! How could you, Gaspar? All blackbirds have the devil inside them, but a raven... He had more brains than me, I can tell you. They seek out death, ravens. They smell death before it comes. There's no black as black as a raven's wing. Much better watching out for hares, Gaspar. Or a chamois. Oh. A good bit of fresh meat. That's what you need in winter. <laughs> Has anyone fed the dog? Uh, if not, I'll give him the rest of this soup. Here, Sam. Here, here. Then, suddenly, summer was gone. The frost got harder. Travellers stopped coming. The inn felt empty. Soon even the lesser peaks were covered in snow. From the kitchen window, the balm horn loomed so blinding white. The dust motes glinted in the dingy gloom. Snow on the roof and the walls of the inn, on the track leading up to it, on the grassy slope where we spread the clothes to dry, and below the inn, the solid white tongue of the glacier snaking through the mountains, all its ruts and cracks and boulders covered smooth with snow, cold even in the sun, cruel. It was time to pack our things and load the mules and set off for Lush. Ulrich and Gaspar were coming with us to the head of the pass. Father walked with them and Mother and I rode the mules. Ulrich fell back from the other two men and walked instead beside my mule. He put his hand on its rump as if to steady and guide it. I could feel his cloak brushing against mine. See the nap of his green loaden sleeve. See his cold breath rise with mine in the air. My cheeks grew hot, in spite of the bitter chill. You're too soft, Gaspar. You feed that dog too much. <coughs> Do you hear that, Ulrich? Don't let Gaspar feed Sam too much. And remember to finish putting straw over the bottles in the cellar. Oh, oh, and you won't forget to bait the traps. Madame, madame, I always bait the traps. And the roof as well, mind. Oh, yes, mustn't forget the roof, Gaspar. And I told you where the goose fat is now, didn't I, Gaspar? I've moved all the jars to the cellar. Yes, madame. And you're not to feed that dog any game. Madame, madame. Far too rich. Far too rich, yes. Poor dogs don't need so much. And he is getting old. Poor dog. Hey, Louise, we're here. The head of the pass, and the sun's still strong. You'll be down in Lurge before you know it. Gaspar knew I dreaded the pass. He always tried to reassure me. We had to dismount now and lead the mules down. Yeah, can give the reins to me. It was then Ulrich spoke to me. Don't forget about me, I'll be here on the mountain. Then he turned away quickly to check the harness on the mule. And I turned and stared down, down into the black hole that was the pass of Gemi. 
It fell away at our feet, so steep, so jagged. It made me sick and dizzy to think of the trail ahead. Goodbye, old friend. <laughs> Take care of the inn and yourself. Uh, goodbye, monsieur. Until next year. Goodbye, madame. Till next year. Oh, good luck, Gaspar. <laughs> good health and a good new year when it comes. And to you, madame. <laughs> and to you, my little princess. Till next year, Gaspar. Take care. Uh, goodbye, Ulrich, lad. Till next year. Goodbye, monsieur. <sighs> goodbye, Ulrich. Here, give me a kiss, lad. <laughs> Remember, eat well, sleep well, and keep well. Louise, you haven't bid farewell to Ulrich. Hurry, we must be on our way. Goodbye, Ulrich. <sighs> Don't forget about me down there in Lush. And then the real journey began. Twisting and turning and climbing with the mules in tow. Was I leading the mule or the mule leading me? And darkness threatening when we got to the bottom. So tired, so cold. But we still had to make our way to the village and my uncle's house. The clamour of the baby cousins, the noise from the street. Right there, not even a spit from the window. People and sledges and mules sludging to and fro. Villagers staring at my shabby mountain clothes. Aunt Berta's rich cooking. Dominoes and brisk every night after chores. Gobbets of grey snow dropping from the clogs puddling the kitchen floor. Coughs and sneezes and chillblains. The long, long winter winding ahead. All right, Sam, all right. He needs a big plate of soup. Or maybe just a small one, remember what hmm? Madame said? She talks too much, Jan Hauser. Some of it sense, a lot of it rubbish. Winter's on its way. The poor dog needs fuel, same as we do. Soup. It's time to eat. When you're alone up here for months on end, you have to keep track of the time. Regular meals. Otherwise, you lose your way, in a manner of speaking. Here. You peel these onions once you've finished with the fire. I'll start on the tatties. One winter... Me and Marcel, that's Marcel Cannell, you know, the old... Uh, the guy who fell ill, I know. And we decided to keep one of the goats up here for the winter. Ah, uh, Madame said we'd rue the day. And we did. Rude the day. That goat hated Sam. It hated the snow, at the shed door. And then his milk dried up, which everyone had said it would. Thanks be to God, it went and died. Just before Christmas. We dragged the carcass down to the glacier. I saw a couple of ravens picking it over the next day. Madame Hauser says they're evil. Huh? Ravens, I mean. She says they have the devil in them. No. They're scavengers, that's all. Of course they sent dead flesh. Well, they arrived before the death. So folks say. Birds aren't evil, lad. They may have spirits in them. I reckon all animals have. But they aren't the devil, however black their feathers are. Or whatever the priest says. They're part of the mountains. I'm part of the mountains. Dare say you feel the same. Yeah. When I'm dead and gone, I'll come back to the mountains. There's no graveyard up here. Not my bones. They'll rest in holy ground, God willing. But my soul, that'll be up here. You falling asleep, lad? No, no. We better get on with the soup if we want to sup tonight. There's no women folk bustling around this kitchen now. Uh, wind's getting up. What's it like in winter? Down in Lush? Oh, no idea, lad, no idea. I've spent the last 16 winters up here at Schwarenbach. <laughs> yes, 16 years ago, Jan Hauser went down to Lush early, September. But the baby wasn't born till All Saints' Day. Louise Hauser. The Snow Princess, I call her. <laughs> Summer or winter, that lass is pale as a ghost and almost as silent. Not that she isn't bonny, man. Hurry up with those onions, lad. I'm famished, aren't you? Half past eight. Time I was in bed. I'll wind the clock first. You shouldn't fall asleep by the fire, Ulrich. 
Marcel and I had a rule. Early to bed, early to rise, however dark, however stormy. It's not as if there isn't plenty to keep us busy. Mm. There's a clock inside us, just like this one here. It has to be wound up too. See here, on the beam above the clock here. That's where Marcel and I had our calendar last year. Days, weeks, months, all cut into wood. Well, you can't hardly see it now. On the winter before, we marked that beam over there by the door. Are you falling asleep again, Ole? No, no. I'll take this candle here. Light the other one from mine before I go up. I'll say good night, lad. Don't waste the candle now. Good night, Gaspar. We'll start our calendar on a new beam tomorrow, as soon as we've had our coffee. Early to bed, early to rise. Keeps a man healthy, not wealthy. Good night. Well, I couldn't sleep by the fire anyway, not with your noise, Sam. Oh, and you fart. Oh, oh good night, old boy. Good night. And good night, Louise Hauser. Dominoes or dice? <laughs> These dominoes are so old that their numbers are worn away almost. Can I hardly see them in the firelight. Yeah. It's a pity I didn't manage to bag that hair today. Jugged hair. Hmm. Chamois would be better, though. It's a good place for chamois beyond the glacier. I'll show you sometime. Roast meat with lentils, dried saps, onions, maybe even a bottle of wine from the cellar. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You asleep, lad, are you? You'll never win at dominoes with your eyes shut, Ulrich. Mm, it's the fire. It's too hot. You've had your feet in the hearth all day. You'll end up cured like that ham up on the beam. I'm outside all the time, chopping wood and shoveling snow. Most fine days, anyway. Get out when the sun shines. When the weather closes in, we'll be shut in for days. I did go out. Don't you want to gain dominoes or dice? I'll give you best of six with the dice. I need to win my backy money. I used to win it off Marcel each winter. Hmm. I did go out, you know, whilst you were hunting. I went as far as the pass, was to the head of the pass. You should have told me where you were going. It's best if each knows where the other's going. So, you went to the pass, eh? Can you still see Lurch from there? Just about, if you know it's there. The pines at the edge of the village, they're uncovered yet. And bits of some of the roofs are still showing. And the church tower. Not for much longer. <clears throat> More snow tonight. By all that's holy, that dog can snore. Yes. It's a pity I didn't bag that hair. I'll go further afield next time. You should come. Yes, I will. I promised Hauser I'd make a hunter of you. Mm, yes. Strange things happen on the glacier. <laughs> Once, right on the edge, I startled a chamois. Or oh, it startled me. It leapt out of nowhere and into nothing. Thin air. Well, there was a bit of a mist, but not much. And the beast flashed past my eyes and disappeared. I know sounds distorted in the mist, but... There wasn't any sound, none at all. As if it had jumped straight into a crevasse. Except it couldn't have. I mean, I'd have heard a beast like that falling into a crevasse, or onto the moraine, for that matter. Well, I took it as a warning. Double-checked every step on the way back. Don't you ever go out without all your gear. Well, of course not. Ice axe, pole, everything. You had all that when you went to the top of the pass, I hope? Of course I did. Someday, when you're an old man, or when your children are, that glacier's going to cough up my chamois. Hmm. And everyone will say, 
Oh, that! That'll be the one old Gaspar went on about back in 1883. Or was it 84? Hmm. <sighs> Have many folk died on the glacier? Who knows? The glacier's not telling. It's the peaks folk kill themselves on, mostly. The scaredy cats, the no alls they don't stand much chance. Lucky if they last the night. But the ones who keep the head, who know what's what, build a snow hole, keep warm, keep calm, have victuals with them, have the gear. They're usually found in time. They can last a night or two, even three. Or get themselves back to where they started from. Better dig a snow hole than walk around in suckles all night. Ugh. The pipe's gone out again. Uh. You've been lost out there? Not lost, no. Caught in the weather, yes. Two or three times. First time, I was with my father. I was just a shaver. I'm not so sure now that we were all that far from the cabin. Looking back, I'd say the old man wanted to teach me a thing or two. But... Then again, there was a wind, and the snow was up to my waist. We stayed in a snow hole till the weather died down. Only put a tiny drop of snow in your mouth, he told me. Even if you're thirsty, just a drop. Warm it up before you swallow. Don't want a cold inside, your outside's cold enough. But I couldn't make the snow warm. Oh, I was cold, cold. Is that you falling asleep again? No, no. Well then. What? You've been turning that dice over and over. It's just about worn through. Are you gonna throw it or what? Uri, wake up. Get up. Come and look. It's here. Finally, it's here. Mm. The snow. The real snow. Oh, old fool. It's hardly falling. So fine. Just filling the air like mist. Listen. Just the faintest sigh. As if it's breathing. Oh, the sense above. It wakes me up to listen to the snow. I woke you up to tell you to get working. As soon as we've had some coffee, we'll have to start shoveling. Keep clearing on and off all day, all winter from now on. We'll have to keep the door free and a pathway outside. It'll be more like a tunnel than a path before long. A tunnel of ice, hard as granite. This could last four or five days. No fresh chamois this week. That's the true sound of winter. Storms can come any time, midsummer any time, howling and battering. But that's the true sound of winter. Emptiness. Silence. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. no. Right. Uh, Maurice. Oh, Maurice, right. the bread. Uh, bread. bread. <laughs> oh, bread. Oh, oh. Uh, has everyone got bread? <laughs> Uh, have the children got some? Oh, uh, no, Elsa. Uh, here, Jean, no, no. you take some bread. Oh, but that old gossip uh, next door better. Surely no one has to her. Oh, no. Now, watch, watch the soup. Oh, oh, no, no, I mean, oh, nobody gosh, listens to a word she says anymore, and that's what makes her so I'm furious. Just, she's such an awful old chatterbox. Oh, you know, yeah, just no. give Elsa one, Lady <laughs> Fool. Oh, 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 no. Uh, What's the kitten doing under the table? Oh, <laughs> so you'll be keeping oh. both the mules next year? Oh. Well, we need one for each guide, really. Mm, oh, that's that's awesome. wonderful. Very creamy, though, I say so myself. Mm. Mm. Yes. Yes. Louise hasn't any bread. Oh, don't mm. you want any? Louise. Louise. Louise! Louise! Ah, uh, you think I'm crazy, Sam. <laughs> Uh, maybe you're right. If 
quiet light on my stomach, like you, dog, I can get right to the edge. Oh, the gas bar was right. Lush has almost disappeared. <laughs> if Gaspar heard me now, eh? <sighs> Come on, Sam. We'll go round by the glacier. See if we can meet up with the old man. Help him bring back his kill, if he has one. You wouldn't say no to a bit of fresh meat, would you, Doc? Gaspar! Gaspar! Where are you, old man? You must have come this way. The sun's going down. Gaspar! Oh, come on, Sam. We must have missed him. We'll be in the doghouse. No fire in the hearth, no soup in the pot. Mm. Gaspar? Aye. Mm. Sam and I went to meet you. Did you come round by the glass here? Yeah? Yes. I told you that's where I was going. Oh, I must have just missed you. Any luck? What do you think? But nothing. Who's Tati Soup again this week? No, no, I've got a chamois. <laughs> but I'm feeling my age. I've come back for the sled. Oh, I'll come and help. No, no, I can manage. The dog can pull it on, that's his job. You best get the soup on, I could eat enough for ten. Sam, Sam, yeah. Come and get this harness on. You work to do. How does that taste then? Mmm, good. Oh, yes. What's waiting for? I was afraid there mightn't be enough flesh on the beast. Mm, no, couldn't be better. Let's hope his sister or brother crosses your path in a few days' time. <laughs> I'll drink to that. Santé. And you'll bag the next one? Mmm. Yes. Mm. If Madame Hauser were here now tasting this, she'd make me the chef instead of the guide. <laughs> <laughs> Another bit of meat. Oh, no, not for me. Uh, more of the juice, more lentils. No, no, I'm, I'm full. More wine. No, no, not for me. My tumbler's still full. Uh, a good piece of meat needs a good drop of wine. Whoa, you're spilling over. It's the first kill of winter. Next time, Ulrich, the honour will be yours. Here's to the next time. <laughs> well... I'd like to give a toast mm -hmm. to Louise. To Louise, the snow princess. The poor little snow girl. Poor? Why, what's the matter? Oh, same as always. The inn not doing too well. The houses having two sous to rub together, you know. But Louise is well enough. She's pale. She's fair. She's tired all the time. They worry about that. It's hard work, the inn. I think Madame wants Louise to grow up quick and marry some strong Montagnard who'll work like a slave and help bring in the money. And there was talk of some cousins of theirs down in Provence. They've got an inn. And three strapping sons. Madame's plotting something. She usually is. So, what will we have after, eh? Dominoes or dice? Mustn't lose track of the time. Have to keep a tally. Hours, days, weeks, months. Till next year. Early to bed, early to rise. Is that you falling asleep by the fire again? No, I'm not asleep. Hey, hey! Why 
haven't you up yet already? I'm going now, without you. It's a perfect day, perfect. I must catch the best of it. No, Sam, stay. Go and wake Ulrich. He's lazy, that man. Should be old Gaspar lying in bed. What's that? Snow falling from the roof. Oh, it'll be lying in front of the door. That means I'll have to clear it. Oh, go away, you soft lump. I know you're right. I should have gone hunting with him. Oh, I must get up. Make some coffee. Peel some tatties. No, first clear the snow, then peel the tatties. Then shovel more snow. And the ice that's round the shutters. Then again, tomorrow. More snow, more ice, more tatties, more beans. More dominoes. All winter long. Till next year. Better notch up the day. Oh, no, he's done that, as always. All Halloween. Tomorrow's her birthday, All Saints Day. I'll go and have one last look at Loesch, even if there is nothing to see but snow. No, Sam, stay. And after I've been to the pass, I'll go round by the glacier. Gaspar, I'll be heading back by then. No, Sam, I said stay. Halloween, but that was a plain old crow. Now get moving. You look a right fool if you miss Gaspar a second time. of the slope I'll see the smoke from the chimney and then the light from the lamp you'll have hung it by the door that's when I feel hungry it's funny that it's always right here my mouth starts to water and my stomach nothing no light no smoke He's only just got back now, then. He'll be seen to the fire. Or maybe he's bagged a chamois. He'll be hanging it in the stable. Uh, at least I'm not too late to make the soup. Oh, damn, Sam. 
Hallo? Gaspar? Down, dog. Gaspar? I thought you'd... Yes, all right. Be just quiet. No. Gaspar? You down there? No, Salah's empty. Gaspar, are you upstairs? You get out of the way, you stupid animal. Shut up! <coughs> Shut up! Oh, I know, I know. You're hungry. Let me light the fire first, then we'll eat. Let's get a good blaze going. Gaspar will be cold when he gets back. Better dig a snow hole than walk around in circles all night. But you won't have dug a snow hole, old man. But it's only now getting dark. And now for the soup. If you aren't back soon, I'd better go and search. But suppose you come back, you don't know where I've gone. Tired at night, chilled to the bone. That's when things go wrong. Oh, come on, Gaspar. I haven't had a voice all day. Come and boast about your kill, chew on your pipe, slurp your soup. Oh, come on, hurry up. It's a still night. There's a moon. If he isn't back by midnight, I'll go and search. Take Sam. Here, Sam. You eat well. We have a long night ahead. Crampons, ice axe, rope. Oh, which one? This one. Why didn't he take this one? Because I hope he likes best. Hmm. And victuals, ham, bannock, brandy. It's time to wind the clock. No sense losing track of the time. And no sense in panicking either. He knows the mountains. Hey, stop that. The plate's empty, you stupid. No, you're not stupid. We've rescued a few, you and Gaspar. Now it's you and me. We'll have to find him. Tomorrow, the two of us will crack open a bottle and feast on boiled ham and beans. And his pipe will keep going out. He'll drone on and on about. I'll make some coffee. And then we leave, Sam, on the stroke of midnight. Five kilometres a day. That uses. That uses. That wears the leather away. Six kilometers a day that uses <clears throat> don't worry Sam I'll be up in a minute oh, that's it come on keep moving seek Sam seek Gaspar Gaspar This is one slope where he always looks for chamois. But he hasn't been here. There's no tracks at all. There's the dawn now. A red sun rising. A hundred kilometers of white mountains. Almost pink now. As pale as... What will she think of me? When she comes back next year. What can I say? I couldn't find him. I gave up. But wake, up, wake up, old man! The sun's rising! Sun rising. Wake up! We need to find you! Oh, seek, Sam. Seek! Yes, you get some of this. You need fuel as well as me. Ah, you're a brave dog. 
We'll find them. I know we will. Oh, how good it would be to sleep now in the sun. To close my eyes for a moment. Just for a moment. I've climbed and abseiled and called. I've put my ear to the ground, to the ice, to listen, trying to stop my heart from beating too loud. Every gram of me listening. I've looked, Louise, looked and looked. Nothing, no one. Only me and the dog and the snow and the sun. Oh, if I could just close my eyes in the sun. Yes, time to go. We're a very long way from the inn. I think we'll have to bed down in a snow hole tonight, Sam. Or seek, Sam. Keep going, Sam. Keep going, Ulrich. the head. Have the victuals. Have the gear. They'll last a night. Or two. Even three. Oh, shut up, you old fool. Let me sleep. Come on, Sam. Keep going. I know you're hungry. But we had the last for breakfast. Black brute. You are the devil. Oh, get out of it! Ah! Go to hell! It was only a crow. Keep calm. It wasn't a raven. Don't fool yourself, Ulrich. It was a raven. Its mouth was red. You saw red against the black. Blood red. Or was it? Am I? I'm so tired. Gaspar! Gaspar! We can't find him because he's not here. We've missed each other. We've missed him, Sam, that's what it is. He'll have been back at the inn for hours, all the time. All the time we've been looking. He's been by the fire with his pipe. And we've been 50 kilometres around, Sam. 50 or more. Come on, old dog. We'll see to that leg of yours when we get back. And Gaspar has a liniment. Makes it himself. Smell the smoke from here. He must have lit the fire. And he'll have hung the lamp out by the... I could smell the wood smoke. I could. Gaspar! Open the door. It's stuck. There's ice. Gaspar! Gaspar! No jacket, no boots, no haversack, no stick, no fire, no soup, no Gaspar. First, light the fire. And then we can eat, Sam. And then we can sleep. Sleep. Uri. Uri. <coughs> Uri. What? 
What was that? Is that you? Oh, thank God. Casper! It's all right, I'm coming. Oh, dear God, why am I not open? It's all right, Casper. I've lit the fire. I'm making the soup. It's all right. Gaspar? Gaspar! Gaspar! Sam, here. In. In! Get in, you brute! Get in! In! It's him. Oh, God, it's him. He's gone. His spirit called out to me. As it left his body, it summons me. No. Worse than that, much worse, it accused me. It blamed me because I was asleep. But, Gaspar, I searched. I searched. You come away from there. Come away from the door. Do you hear me? It's there, Sam, isn't it? It's out there, waiting. His body ought to rest in holy ground, but I can't find him. I'll never find him now. And his spirit will punish me. It'll haunt me forever, for as long as I live. Who's that? Oh, Louise. What are you doing out of bed at this hour? I'm cold, Aunt Bertha. Oh, so cold. I thought I'd sit here by the stove for a bit. Oh, you're shivering. Are you ill? Something woke me. I don't know what. What, a nightmare? And I was just turning over to go to sleep again when the room suddenly turned cold. Mm. Deathly cold. Oh. As if someone just then had opened the shutters. All the shutters in the house. And the mist from the mountains had blown down here and into the room and round me. Oh. But Elsa and Arnaud were fast asleep beside me and quite, quite warm. So I came to sit by the stove. Hmm. A nightmare? No. I felt terribly afraid. But... I don't remember any dream. I'll fetch you another show. Ooh, the hours after midnight, they're the coldest of all. One kilometre a day. That uses. That uses. One kilometre a day. That. Where's the weather? I used to love being alone. I'd escort the travellers through the pass. Come back alone. Now, I am alone. If I could... But I didn't. Don't open the door. If I could, I'd go to the summit of the pass. I'd throw myself over, down and down, over and over into nothing. How sweet to let it happen, to feel the rush. She would say a prayer for me when she heard. But I can't go out. It's out there now, waiting for the flames to die in the chimney. It's pushing snow off the roof. I don't go upstairs. I'll sleep here by the fire. I have to keep it burning. Oh, let me sleep. I want to sleep. Get in, Sam. Sam, keep it away. Keep out, do you? There's two of us, Sam and me. I've done no wrong. I've searched, you know that. 
You know. Three nights and two days, you know. You know. Paths, bud. It's taken a beating this winter. Good thing you shot that mule. <laughs> he gave me a bit of bother, though, has it? <laughs> the proverbial mule. <laughs> but there's no malice in him. Uh -huh. He's gentle, Papa. That mule likes to be treated gently. Oh, a sensitive mule. <laughs> <laughs> he does everything Gaspar tells him. Well, if Gaspar says so, it must be true. Well, here we are. Whoa, stop, stop. <sighs> Oh, what a glorious day, eh? Oh. <sighs> Smells of spring. <laughs> oh, I envy you living up here all summer. Well, it's colder up here than in Lush, though. I don't mind. It's home. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, the shutters are closed. Oh, I'll be away hunting. No mm -hmm. oh, smoke from the chimney. There isn't a mark in the snow. No footprints, no sled marks. But it hasn't snowed recently, so how come... Papa! Look over there under the kitchen shutters. What is it? Oh, just some animal. Mm, strange. It's in the other building. It looks like a skeleton. Oh, don't go and look, Mama. Stay here. Oh, don't be silly, Louise. It's just some proof fox. The bones are picked clean and frozen deep into the snow. Mm. It looks, looks like a dog. Um, Louise, I'm sorry. I think it might be Sam. Oh, no. oh, whatever happened, it was a good while ago. The bones are frozen deep in the snow. Gaspar! Hey, hey! Gaspar! They aren't here, Jose. They must be. In God's name, what was that? Some animals got trapped inside the inn. You have no guns, Hauser. Your rifle's inside. <coughs> the door's bolted. Be careful. They had almost forgotten about Ulrich and Gaspar and Sam. They were so busy breaking down the door. I can still hear the sounds. The howls of the creature inside and outside the cracking and splitting of the door. I buried my head in the neck of my mule. We can get through that. Hey, hey Jean, you, you stay here. They fetched the creature outside, out of the stink and the dark. He was wrinkled, old, long white hair, eyes sunk deep. He cowered into the snow, naked as an animal. In the name of God... What? For who? God knows. But I knew. It was Ulrich. That spring, I fell ill. I couldn't walk. They said it was a mountain fever, that my grandmother had suffered the same. They gave me medicine that made me wretch, and broth I couldn't swallow. The inn was busy. The travellers always asked, what really happened here last winter? The new guides always said they didn't know, that Ulrich Kunzi was in Sion. The nuns there were saintly, but he couldn't speak a human word. By the time I could walk again and help in the kitchen, the swallows were leaving, flying over Schwarenbach. The first frosts came and then the snow. Whenever I close my eyes, I can hear it falling, see the white flakes floating, flying. They never stop. They dance in my head, make me dizzy. I want to fall into the whiteness and sleep. 
Oh, let me sleep. So white. So light. So... evil. The Inn by Guy de Maupassant was dramatised for radio by Sue Glover. Ulrich was played by Robin Lang. Gaspar, Gareth Thomas. Louise, Vicky Liddell. Jeanne Hauser, Kirsten Murray. Jean Hauser, John Shedden. Aunt Berta, Tamara Kennedy. And Uncle Maurice, Sandy Nielsen. The Inn was directed by David Jackson Young.